Hey everyone, this is Mr. Fry, and I want to do a video about how to get from the original starter program here in Restarting Slime Wars, and how to get the game screens in. Things like the begin game screen, game over, show level, and that kind of stuff. All right, so when you click on this link, it will bring you to Slime Wars 2 Starter. Uh, I made a copy of it so I don't mess up the original, and I want to show you all the different steps we're going to do. I'm going to go a little bit fast, but anytime you want, pause the video. You can replay it so you can see what's going on. All right, first step I need to do is create a bunch of backdrops. So I move my mouse over here to where backdrops are. I click on backdrops. Then I come over here to where it says backdrops up here. And now I have my main backdrop. It's called creepy backdrop something. I'm going to delete this name, and I'm going to rename this one game because this is the backdrop I use for my game. All right, so now I want to make some new backdrops. So I'm going to come here to the choose a backdrop, and probably the fastest way to just create a black backdrop is to pick one, pick the blue sky like that, double click it, and then now come to the color. I want black, so I'm just going to click on the color black. Um, I click just anywhere to get rid of that box. Now I click on the paint can, click one time, and now that fills it with black. All right, so now I want a one that says um, Slime Wars, um, the title of the game, and press uh, any key to begin. So I'm going to pick green as my color. Um, I'm going to come here. I'm going to get the paintbrush. I want maybe a slightly bigger paintbrush. 28 is pretty good, and I'm going to write Slime Wars. I'm going to go a little bit fast. Slime Wars, like that. I'm just doing this fast to show you. I'm going to do the rest of it in text. So I'm going to pick a different color, maybe something a little yellowy. And now I'm going to put a text box on here. And we're going to say press B to begin, like that. Um, I'm doing kind of an easier version than press the space bar. Um, so now I click on this arrow. This arrow lets me move this around. It also lets me grab a corner of it and make it bigger. So I'm going to grab it like that. Uh, that's maybe a little bit big. Go a little bit smaller like that. Press B to begin. All right, and so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to come up here to the title, and I'm going to call this Begin Screen, like that. Okay? All right. So that's my begin screen. It has the title of the game, how to get it started. All right, I want another black screen. So I come here, I click on it, click on blue, pick black over here, just click on it. Um, come down here, pick the taint, tipped over paint can, click on my screen. Now I have black, and this is going to be my show level screen. So let's type in that title. S-H-O-W, S-H-L-E-V-E-L, show level. And this is the screen where I'm going to put level one, level two, level three, all that kind of stuff. Um, I need one last screen that I want to write the words game over on. So I'm going to duplicate this black screen. I've already got one, might as well. And this is going to be my game over screen. So I'm going to say game over. If you wanted to get a game over screen from Google, you could do that. Or if you wanted to get a game over graphic, I'm just going to do the paintbrush trick again. Um, whatever color. Maybe I'll make this red because red you lose. That's good. Um, I might come over here to the paintbrush and I'm going to say game over. All right, so we've got four screens, game, begin screen, uh, show level, and game over. So I'm ready to use these. All right, so let's think of anything else I'm going to need to get this game working the way I want. All right, well, one of the things we mentioned is that in this game, there are going to be different levels. We have a variable for score. We can keep track of the score, but we also want to keep track of what level we're on. We don't have that yet. So I'm going to go to make a variable, and I'm going to type in the word level. Um, this variable will be available to all sprites. So I say OK. That's perfect. All right, and so now I have a variable called level. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to add a new sprite. 
And this new sprite is going to have words written on it. So I'm going to create the sprite um, and I'm going to go to the paintbrush because I'm going to make my own sprite. All right, so I'm going to come here to T for text. I'm going to come here to the color. I'm going to pick something green and slimy looking. Um, and now I've got my text tool. So I'm going to write the word level like that. Um, I'm going to come to this arrow that lets me pick my word. I'm going to make it big like this. All right, and then now I'm going to do another text tool uh, right here. I'm going to write a number, number one. Um, I'm going to come to my arrow so I can select it and make it big like that. Uh, that's a little bit too big, maybe like that looks good. <clears throat> All right, so now I have it saying level one. And so now what I'm going to do is first I'm going to name this level one. Okay, and now I'm going to duplicate this back this costume so now i have another costume called level one i mean called level two but it says one on it so i'm just going to double click that one and now i'm going to change that into a two all right so now it says level two it named it the next number for me it was kind of smart and now i have level two all right i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to right click duplicate it so now i have level one level two and another duplicate um, it already renamed it for me, level three. So I'm just going to come here like this, double click that. And now I've got a three and I'll just make one more costume. So I just right clicked it again, duplicate. It already called it level four for me. I'm going to double click on this and now it's level four. So I have four costumes, level one, level two, level three, level four. And we are getting close to ready um, to tell this game how to work. <clears throat> All right, so in the beginning of a game, you get to tell it every single thing that happens. It all starts with the green flag, so I'm going to get a green flag. And now i got to think about what I want to have happen. What do I want the player to do? My player is going to be my boss, and my player is going to do all of my background switching. So when this game starts, I want to pick which backdrop it starts on. It's not game over. It's going to start on begin screen. So I'm going to get that switch backdrop to begin screen. And then I want to make sure my player is hidden. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get hide. So when the green flag is clicked, I switch backdrop to begin screen. All right. Now the next thing that's going to happen is I need to wait for somebody to hit the B key. So I'm going to go to events. I'm going to go to events and get this one that says it starts off normally saying when the space key is pressed. If I click on this little arrow, I can pick whatever key I want. I'm going to get the one that says when the B key is pressed. And when the B key is pressed, then I'm going to tell everybody, hey, it is time to get going on this game. So basically now what I want to do is shout out a message to everybody. So I'm going to broadcast a message that it is time to show the level. All right, now actually, I think I've already typed in that message. Let me check. So I typed in that message, show level. If you haven't typed it in yet, you'd come here to new message. You'd type in whatever you want and say, okay. Um, so I've already typed it. So I'm going to come here and just pick it, show level. So when the B key is pressed, show level. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to have something waiting for when I receive show level. All right, when I receive show level. Um, I want to do a couple things. Number one, I want to make sure I'm on my show level backdrop. So I'm going to switch backdrop to show level. All right, so switch backdrop to show level. Um, I am going to, um, let's see, make sure I'm hidden. I already know I'm hidden, but it can't hurt just to be careful. I'm in looks, so I'm going to get hide again. Um, and then basically all I'm going to do, oh, right, no, I've, I've already broadcasted show level. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for one second. And that'll just give me enough time to show what level I'm on and then move on to starting the game. All right, so after I wait one second, then I'm going to broadcast a message that tells everybody, hey, it is time to start the level. All right, I don't have that message anywhere, so I'm going to click on message where it says new message, and I'm going to say start level like that. I just typed it in, and I say OK. So now I'm going to broadcast start level. All right, and then I'm going to use start level 
instead of green flag in both of these places and any other place in the game where I want the game to start a little bit later on and not right at the beginning. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to pull this down a little bit. I'm going to throw out the green flag. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. I'm going to throw out the green flag. And now when I receive start level, that's when I actually want to get this whole thing going. So I'm going to click this up here like this. When I receive start level, that's good. I'm going to get another one when I receive start level. And so when I receive start level, that's when I get these forever loops going. Everything gets going. I set all my stuff. Okay. Um, everything is looking good here. About the only thing I'm realizing I forgot to do, um, I made a variable, uh, remember, called level. Um, where's our level variable? Here it is. It always alphabetizes them for you. And I never once told the game what level we should start at. So I'm going to get this thing right here. Right now it says set ground. I don't want ground. I want level. So I'm going to click on level and I'm going to bring that here. I'm going to put it right under the green flag because when the green flag is clicked, I want my game to know, hey, we're on level one right now. So I'm going to set level to one. All right, so let's think here. Green flag is clicked. We switch backdrop to begin screen. Um, we wait now until the B key is pressed. Once that's pressed, we go to show level. And once we're on show level, we wait a second, and then we start the game. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Now let's make sure that everybody else knows what to do. All right, let's check the ball. When the green flag is clicked, it hides so we don't see the ball. Um, when the space key is pressed, it shoots. That's fine. Doesn't bug us. And when I start as a clone, no problem. So the ball is actually okay. We don't need to do anything. Let's check about for the bad guy. All right, the bad guy, when the green flag is clicked, it wants to start a forever loop and start making clones. Well, I don't want that to happen when the green flag is clicked. I want that to happen when I receive start level. So I'm going to break off this forever loop. I'm going to go to events and I'm going to get when I receive start level. Right now it says show level. I'm going to click on that and make it say start level. So now when the level starts, that's when it'll spit out new clones. In the beginning, green flag, it hides. When it starts as a clone, it knows to do all its stuff. Probably the only other thing I need to do is make sure when it's show level, that I'm not on the screen and I don't keep making clones. All right, so I need to do two steps. First one is I come to control and I need to tell it to stop this forever loop. Stop all would tell every program everywhere to stop, so I don't want that. I just want to stop other scripts in this sprite. So I want to stop this forever loop. So I say stop other scripts in this sprite, and then the last thing, just in case there are any clones out there, I want to delete this clone. Okay, uh, show level, do that, and we're all good. And this takes care of our um, bad guy. So it knows when the green flag is clicked, it just hides. When it receives start level, that's when it actually comes out. And when I receive show level, it doesn't spit out any clones and it knows to go away. All right, so now the last thing is this words of level. Um, this is where it's going to print on the screen. Now I can just kind of drag this a little bit to the middle, kind of like that. There, it looks pretty good in the middle. That's fine. All right, so when the green flag is clicked, what do you think I want to do? Hopefully you knew when the green flag is clicked, all I want to do is hide. Um, and then the thing this one's listening for is when I receive show level. And when I receive show level... I um, show, so I go to looks, um, I show, and then it was waiting for a second, so I'm going to go ahead and wait for a second too, and then basically after a second, I hide. And that is all I do. Um, now, there's only one other thing. How do I know what costume I should be wearing? If you remember, I've got all these different costumes, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. So how do I know which costume I want? All right, well, I'm sure going to need to switch my costume. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to get switch costume. Maybe right after I show, that's good. And I could switch to level four. I could switch to level three. But I don't really know which costume I want. 
But what I do know is that if I'm on level one, I want costume one. And if I'm on level two, I want costume two. And if I'm on level three, I want costume three. Well, that lets me do a cool trick. Instead of needing to tell it what number I'm going to use, what I can do is I can tell it to put in whichever costume I am on that level. So when level is one, it'll switch to costume one. When level is two, it'll switch to costume two. And every single time I come back here, as long as level is changing, it'll know how to go to the next costume. All right, that's pretty good. Let's give it a test and see if this is working. All right, I'm going to make this big. Um, I'm going to get rid of these variables. I don't see lump speed, don't see jump speed, don't see what I am. All right, now I'm going to come up here, start the green flag. When the green flag is clicked, Slime Wars, press B to begin. I'm going to press B, and then now it shows me level one, waited a second, and now my player is here. All right, I'm hoping to see a cube in a second. I shoot the cube, and all is good. All right, so now the last thing that we haven't done is make it so that when the cube hits me, I actually go to a game over screen. Right now, what we did was we made it so the player dies and it stops everything, but it doesn't go to a game over screen. So let's see if we can fix this really quick. All right, for that, I need to go back to the player, um, and I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to go down into these functions, and I want the function called collision, this one right here. It says, if touching the cube. All right, so it knows how to check. It knows if I'm touching the cube that I should die. It switches to throwing attack seven. That seems weird, but that's the costume before the first dying animation. Then it's going to do dying for me five times, um, and then it's going to stop everything. All right, well, rather than stop everything, what I actually want to do is shout out and tell everybody um, that it's time for the game to be over. So I'm going to click on events right here. I'm going to go to broadcast. And I want to broadcast the message um, that basically says not show level, but I want to broadcast a message that says game over, like that. Okay, all right, broadcast game over. Okay, so now I'm going to come back up here, and I want to check and make sure everything's all good. All right, so when I receive show level, it switches backdrop to show level, it hides, and um, we're all good. So now I got to do something a little bit like that for um, when I receive game over, All right? I'm going to move these around a little bit so I have some room. Um, and I'm going to get when I receive like this. I don't want show level. I want game over. So the basic things I'm going to do are begin switch my backdrop and hide. I'm going to come right up here to this one and I'm going to duplicate it like that. So I'm going to switch backdrop, not to begin screen, but to game over, and then it's going to hide, and that takes care of my player. So when I get game over, my player knows switch backdrop to game over and hide. All right, my ball um, should know that everything is good, but the only thing I should do is that let's say there was a ball on the screen right as the level changed or right as it was game over. What I'd like to do is get rid of those and make sure it knows to um, be done and it doesn't spit out any more new things. So when I receive game over, I'm going to do those two steps again. I'm going to go to control. I don't want stop all, but I do want stop other scripts in this sprite. And then I want to make sure I delete this clone. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to do the exact same thing for show level. So I make sure I delete the clone and I make sure nothing is happening that I don't want to have happen in case there was a clone that was still running or anything like that. All right, so this is all good. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing for this cube. And, in, and um, so I've already got it when I receive show level. So now I'm just going to click on this one time. I'm going to hit control C and now I'm going to hit control V to duplicate it just like that. And instead of show level, when I receive game over, and now it knows to stop anything so it won't keep creating clones, and it knows to delete this clone. All right, let's do one quick last test. I'm going to run my game. I'm, I'm going to make it big so I can see it. I'm going to press B to begin. Shows me level one. 
I can run around, I can jump, I'm all good. I can shoot a bad guy when it comes out, bad guy dies, that's great. I'm going to let myself get hit and make sure that the bad guy can kill me and we go to game over. I go to game over, I die, game over screen, everybody's gone and we are all good. All right, whenever you're done, always save a game like this. And this is how you get all the different game screens to be part of the starter package. Hope this was helpful for you.